Oh, we have totally have some background, so this will be fine. That's okay. Mm. What do you love most about your fans? You first. Good job. Oh, that's a difficult question. Uh, you know, I love that fans. Good kid, Apple Jack. Yes, they, they Apple show Jack. Tombstone. What are you doing? Shut up. Right. What do you like most about your fans? Uh, what I like most about the fans is the fans actually show their appreciation. Uh, also, the fans get inspired by your work, so they they're gonna create work that's like you know derived or that's I think that's how you call it from your work. So it's kind of you inspire them too, and and it's just I love to see that people like my stuff because some people you know see something they like it but they never say they like it, and you know it gives you the feeling that. You're doing something and you're basically doing it just only for yourself and nobody else and you know? So I that's what I really like. People really show their appreciation for someone's work. Okay, then do you know? Yeah, well I love uh, how respectful my fans are. I mean they they almost don't even feel like fans. They're not anonymous enough. They feel like friends. They're people that send me messages, they send me support, they they talk about, you know, I'm working on this thing, can I use your music for it? I think it's fantastic. And you know, when you have that kind of relationship with someone it, it, it stop you know, like a fan is someone who just like kind of admires you and just sort of know that they exist, but like a friend is someone that you talk to and have active conversations with. And it happens all the time where people seek me out on Skype or they find me on Facebook and they add me as friends and they just start up a conversation because they want to talk about like Nissan because I'm a car guy or they want to talk about Stanley Kubrick because I'm a film person. You know, we, we just we find common ground with people. And more than anything, it's almost becoming like a networking tool or a social media than it is really about, you know, being an artist or being, you know, some kind of mogul or something. So that's, I think that's what I like the most, is being able to have an active dialogue with people who appreciate what I'm doing and I can kind of counter appreciate and then they get to feel like I notice them and I feel like I no they, they notice me and it's kind of, it's a really nice um, way to cross paths. Okay. And then what are the negatives about being so popular? Wow. I actually haven't really found that many negatives yet, but I guess that Everyone that has a certain amount of popularity is always mm -hmm. going to get some negative responses, <clears throat> despite they may not even you know deserve it. Because some people are just you know they they they, they want to be appreciated too. I can understand that, but some people are going to go all the way to do that. Like you know, they'll just do anything to get some kind of attention, mm -hmm. and that's just sad. But you know, it just happens. <laughs> okay, again, that's such a don't worry about it. About it. Uh, but yeah, I haven't found that many negatives. I haven't even, you know, had any problems with trolling yet or anything. I'm like surprised about that. So I, I don't think I can answer that question properly yet. Well, maybe I'm missing I, well, something. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm missing something. Popularity is relative. Um, to some people, if I'm popular. I don't really consider myself popular because I can still walk into a store and nobody knows who I am. You know, I mean. So that, there's that. But I mean, there are some of the negatives, I mean, some of the very obvious negatives is people are always clamoring for my attention. And they don't necessarily have anything in common with me. They just want me to say hello to them, and then they want to talk about absolutely nothing at all. That's true. And, you know, that, I mean, it's, it's, I'm grateful that they, that they respond so positively to me, but at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, enough is enough. I can't give everybody attention all the time. You know, if I did that, I would be a wreck. Mm -hmm. I just can't do it. And I think one of the negative parts is just having to say no to people. People are like, hey, could you, would you mind Skyping with me? Or, you know, can you just talk to me real quick about this thing? And I just have to say, sorry, no, I don't have the time. And I, That's a good you know, I don't want to hurt anybody, but like, I feel like, I'm, I always feel like I'm letting someone down. And I hate that feeling. I really do. I, I actually have to I would, agree with that. Yeah, yes. I mean, I would love to make everybody happy. If I had a million hours a day to do everything, I would absolutely do it all, but I just can't. And I mean, and what that turns into is sometimes people will resort to being really negative because they, they just imagine that if, in a world of people clamoring for they attention. They think you're not important yeah. enough to talk to them, but. In fact, if you don't, if you talk with everybody, you won't be able to do your stuff that yeah. everybody loves. Well, That's the whole problem. I mean, I can think of specifically yeah. there was one guy who intentionally was just a jerk to me to try to get my attention, oh, and, and I had to block him because he was just, he, he would just dump me into Skype calls. He would insult me. He insulted my girlfriend. He just thought this would wow. get him more attention, and it's just like no block. I mean, you know, I've only had to do that once. It was to someone. I like to talk to people yeah. because I like to hear what people think, what people have to say. But there's some. There was. Just, one person, I'm not going to name it, just, just in case, but, you know, someone calls you, you're expecting someone to talk to you, and you're open, you're listening, and someone is just, you know, insulting you over a call, just for no reason, and you're like, why did I deserve this, you know? And it just happens, and I guess that's just what you got to live with. I'm not, you know, I'm not upset about it, so. I'm bitter. It just it's, 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 yeah, it's just, you know, 
even in a fandom like this, there are still people who are negative. Always. It's just a given. Mm -hmm. and then what got you into what you do? Wow. Talk about the lasers, PJ. <laughs> okay, but you mean lasers or just mm -hmm. ponies in general? Uh, ponies will be later, but okay, lasers. Okay, sure, are... lasers. Um, that's an interesting story. Um, like, uh, I was on YouTube when I was small. I don't know exactly what age anymore, I'm sorry. But um, I had a guy that I saw uh, making these laser which They were pretty basic at the time. But um, he was an anime fan. That was very obvious. And I actually started to get into anime. And I went to my first convention. And I just happened to meet that guy, the exact same guy from YouTube, right there. He was there, and I was like... I've seen your YouTube guy. I, I, I love your stuff, and we became friends like really quick. We just had to start to hang out, and eventually I stepped over at his place, and it was really cool. He already slept over at my place, but you know I saw that thing laying there, and I know that was that box, the laser projector that made that possible. And I was like, oh, can I please see it in action? And he turned it on, and I saw it, and I was like, wow! I was you know enchanted by it. I was like, I need to get something like this. And I, so I started asking him for help to build something and I started working on something and I just completely failed. I, I just I wasn't able to make it. So instead of, you know, uh, building my own equipment, why not just help him out make content? So I didn't have any laser software or anything at the time. So what I did was I figured something out. I used to make non realistic uh 3D animations and I found out a way to make laser shows, like those graphical shows, without laser software and people were like, Whoa, what the hell? That's how is that possible? So I posted my works on a forum that apparently it was the biggest laser forums in the world. And this comedy, like the biggest laser comedy, was watching that forum. And they saw that and they were like, whoa. So they posted about it. And I was like asking about their products if I could have a trial because I just was curious. I'm a very curious person. And they said, no, we don't do trial. We, we don't. So eventually I started like, okay, that's too bad. And, and, and eventually they, they started posting more work and they were like, okay, please contact us through this email. We, we want to talk to you. So they did, this, they did this offer, and they offered me the best, the best software, not a projector, the best software available in trade for my services and stuff, and my findings and everything. So I said yes, and I did a test, and I succeeded, and I, I, I thought it was a joke, and I, I checked my post, and I got a package, and, and surprisingly, I opened the package, and it was that thing they promised, and I was like freaking out. So I went to my dad and asked him for a loan to get myself my first projector, which was home built by someone else. And from there I just started. I, I, I leveled up, you know, I got so much experience really fast. Eventually, comedies that existed for 40 years were coming towards me to ask for help or teachings. And I was like, whoa, this is serious. So I started my company, and slowly after that, I got involved with ponies, but I'm gonna keep that for, you know, mm -hmm. a separate question. Nice. Yeah. Well, I've, I've always been a musical person for as long as I can remember. Um, even at five years old, I had my first keyboard, which I, I still have to this day. I just got done taking it apart and putting it back and fixing it and putting it back together. Um, you know, my little tiny keyboard and a Fisher Price tape recorder with the microphone taped mm. to the speaker. Mm. You know, that's how I started. But I mean, as I, got, as I grew older, I mean, I, my interests waned and they came back. And it's always like I've always gotten into other things and I've always come back to that. So it's like, that's kind of the hobby that always is sort of the follow through line to what I'm doing with the rest of my life. Um, and so, I mean, I went to school, I, I'm, I'm a college graduate, I went to school for film, um, but music was always part of that. And I've done, I did a lot of music videos when I was in school because that's kind of honestly where I thought, still maybe think I would like to end up. Um, but I mean, it kind of all started when I was like 16. I got my first MIDI keyboard and an interface and I started using a sequencer. And that's when I thought like, okay, this is for real. Now I'm actually doing something that's technically complicated to try and do something. And it's still very, very limited. And I ended up um, joining up with the video game music community called vgmusic.com. They still exist. It's all video game MIDIs. And I kind of took home a lot of um, sequencing skills and MIDI sequencing skills. Nothing audio related at that point, just strictly sequencing. Uh, to learn how to be a better composer, really. And I think after being there for two or three years, like, that's when I got into school and I kind of dropped music for a while. But I mean, just kind of slowly I've always accumulated technology, accumulated hardware, as anyone will attest to. I have lots and lots of hardware. Um, yes. And uh, it's always been off and on. And then I think at, at one point, I started writing a song and I wanted to work with a couple vocalists that I knew. And it was sort of almost like a trial. I wanted to start a band. I always knew I wanted to start a band, like a two-person band, either me and, me and a female vocalist or me and a male vocalist. 
and I just wanted to be the guy behind the scenes running everything, sort of the, the Vince Clark of things, or the, or the, the Martin Gore, as it were. And um, I had two people, one, sh one was a singer I knew, she was signed to a label in Minneapolis with me, um, and she was kind of a punk singer by trade. So it was, and it was, she was, I mean, I love her, but she was really difficult to work with her because she did not understand my phrasing at all. So I had, this, I had very specific rhythms I wanted her to sing, and she just really struggled with it. Pitch was great. I was able to get, I mean, it turned out fine in the end, but it was, it was a harder process. The other was this guy that we weren't exactly friends because he was kind of not a nice person sometimes, but he was a great singer, and actually you could easily compare him to David Bowie, and it'd be a very fair comparison that kind of singer, and he just, or Frank Sinatra, and he just nailed everything, first take. So I worked with him for maybe, I don't know, a year and a half, two years. I started writing, I would write material, just an instrumental, and I'd send it to him, he'd write lyrics and send it back to me, and then he'd come over and he'd sing it, and then we'd finish it, and we'd, do, we'd work very, very quickly. In fact, there's probably an album's worth of material that no one's ever really gonna get to hear because we recorded it and then we kinda had a falling out because we were supposed to record one night and then he decided not to show up and didn't tell me. And at that point, I sort of kicked him out and went on my own. Um, and that was, it's kind of like, where do I want to go with this? So I mean, like, that, my musical journey sort of ended for a really long time because I got really sick, sort of the fall 2009. I had, I'm not going to go into details of what kind of illness it was. It wasn't like threatening, but I just, I destroyed my voice. It was gone. Couldn't sing, couldn't talk for maybe six months, a year. I thought it was done. I really honestly thought it was over. And so, I mean, and this, the problem is this happened again not too, not, not too long ago. I've got some different medical support now, but I mean, I just thought that was it. that was the end of it. So I mean, I didn't sell anything, thankfully, but I really thought I would never do anything with it again unless I found another vocalist to work with. So coming on the heels of that, I sort of, last year, I mean, I thought, you know, let me start a new project. I know some new vocalists now. I'm still writing material. I could probably come up with something. I should just do this again because it's fun. And so I started actively hunting for a female vocalist. And I came up with this name, Dino. That was going to be my band. You know, I was going to be Martin Gore, and someone else was going to be my Dave Gahan or Allison Wayan. You know, and um, for whatever reason, I sort of landed in the music community just because I figured like, oh, I like the show and I like music and maybe I can glean some tips from other producers and become better at it. Because there are things that, I mean, I was aware of the scene. I was aware of what, you know, Not Club was doing. I was aware of what Wooden Toaster was doing. I was aware of uh, what Eurobeat was doing. And I was like, I want to, I want to begin like talk to these people and figure out how they do what they do. And so I fell into the scene just kind of by accident. And I just kind of, I just wanted to sort of float in, ask some questions, float back out, and go back and do my own thing. But it didn't really work out that way. I don't understand how, really. They're, you know, it's kind of like one of those motivational posters. Make one pony song, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, you know, it's sort of... I made one track where I decided to sing on it. It was the first time I used my microphone in almost three years. And the response that I got was just, it was overwhelming. I had no idea. I mean, I never considered myself a good singer, you know? And I think from that point forward, I became that guy. And to like go from this low, low of where I was just a couple years earlier to go from that point. I mean, that was just spectacular, you know? So, I mean, and it's kind of all been downhill from there. I mean, you know, I've wrecked my voice again recently which is why I haven't been doing anything, but I mean, it's it's kind of coming back. It's not quite such a long and arduous journey as it was the first time around because I know a little bit more about what's wrong, um, but still, just that that feeling of redemption from being the lowest low to the highest possible high, it's just, it's fantastic. And that's really been my journey, you know, so. Okay, and then how did you become bronies? You want to start with me? It's up to you. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I, I started on, you know, I just registered my company, and I always used to, you know, I my interest in anime kind of dropped slightly, and, you know, I always do memes, but this was not a meme, but just saying that, but um, I was, you know, on Twitter, and there was also this network called Forum Spring, and basically you can ask questions, and someone replies to it. So, I asked a question to someone random, and someone responded with a video. I don't know what video it was anymore, but it was a pony video, that's what I do know. 
so I clicked the video out of curiosity and I watched it and I was I was laughing it was funny I don't know what it was anymore but it was seriously funny so I saw the related videos and I saw all these pony videos and I was like whoa what the hell's going mm -hmm. on like, what's going on on the internet so I clicked a few and eventually I stumbled upon music and I think the first I stumbled upon was Pinkie Pie Swear and eventually Tombstone Living Tombstone some music and Alex says and I was just like wow this is amazing this sounds cool I love this so, but I didn't watch the show right away. I was like, still like, nah, we're still talking about My Little Pony. This is, this is not for, this is not for adults. This is for, for childs and, you know? And I was like, I was just, but the music was so great. I kept listening to the music and eventually I couldn't let go. And I was like, I have to, I have to, to see what's going on. Why, why people are doing this? And I watched the show out of curiosity and, and season one, it wasn't bad. I was like, this is not bad. So I watched the second episode, season one, and I was just, this is actually good, this is good, this is great. So I kept watching it and watching it, and I, I watched two, I watched whole season one at one sitting. <laughs> and even in, in the night, it was late at night, and everybody was sleeping in the house, and I was still watching My Little Pony. And I was like, what am I doing? And I was like, the season two, were, uh, season two was already starting, um, but I was like, still watching. So I was like, no, oh, I love this. And eventually, I, I, I figured out that all the videos came from the community. It was called Bronies. And I was like, well, Bronies, I'm going to check it out. So I found Bronies on Facebook and Bronies here, Bronies there. So eventually, I, I started, like, I felt like, maybe we should just do something. So I drew a shrugging Pinkie Pie as a joke, more kind of as a joke. I wasn't really too serious about it, but I just did it and I posted it. And I got comments and it was like, it was awesome. And I actually kind of enjoyed making it. I couldn't explain why. And, and I just, you know, eventually started making stuff for Alex S. I made Alex's logo. I made the Living Tombstones logo, I guess, at some point. But um, I was, like, starting to live stream. And the first guy that watched my live stream, like, there was nobody. There was just one guy, Alex S., was watching my live stream. And I was like, wow, Alex S.? Wasn't that the guy that was listening to or something? So, so I was like... Okay, that's cool. So the next day I started live streaming again. And I wasn't watching the chat, I was just chatting. I was, I mean, I was just, you know, working with laser stuff. And eventually I just took a peek again at the chat and I was like, there was this one guy commenting on a whole list. And was saying like, hey, hey, hello, hey, hey. And I was and eventually it ended up with a sad face. And the name was The Living Tombstone. <laughs> and I was like, wow, The Living Tombstone? Oh my God, The Living Tombstone? So, I kind of freaked out, and I, th I think we exchanged contacts right away. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, just come and shot, come and shot. Hey, what's up? I'm still interviewing. You're, you're, you're still interviewing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so, about this thing, I remember that I was in the chat when I saw your stuff. So it was like, I was checking your stuff, and yeah. again, back to the interview where I spoke about, you know, helping other people. It's like, I saw that you have so much talent, and you're one, one of the most... For, forget lasers, you are like talented yeah. altogether. Thanks. You like, do all those kind of things in 3D and everything. And, and I think that, you know, dude, I gotta help you or something. We gotta talk, and, and from there, well, I remember it was so funny, like, I got in contact, and what happened, I put, I put you in groups, and ever since you grew, and you basically knew and everybody, that, like, there's points in you actually <laughs> talked to Tyler Strong before I did, like, how did you do that? <laughs> I, I shouldn't have let you get in my contacts, it was my fault. <laughs> but then again, it was worth it, because you're really talented, and, and, and basically, we're really good friends, we all yeah. play, to play games together before. Yes, and Omgepop and stuff. Omgepop. Oh, it's the best thing ever. Omgepop, so for those who doesn't understand. Yeah, it, it, it just went on from there, and we just, we started to hang out more, I started to get more involved, I started to make more stuff. And it was just, like, it was, at first I was like this, like, like this small, and nobody knew me, and nobody knew my work, and it just started growing and growing and growing, and, and I think after that performance, it, it, it went up like this. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, it's like this with lasers. Uh, first of all, about 95%, and that's, I think it's even more than 95%, of all lasers don't make their own stuff. And that's sad, but it's a fact. Even the companies that earn two million a year or more, they don't make their own stuff. It's just how it works. It's sad. The fact is that I do make all my stuff custom. But lasers are like they don't get credit for their work. They're they're not famous. Nobody knows them. It's just like it's this small world, and nothing goes outside of it, and it just stays like there. And only, only everybody's thinking about money, so nobody's doing anything outside the community that doesn't earn money. So you know, I'm overwhelmed that all these people are giving me this attention, and 
if I was more of the emotional type, I would have cried probably <laughs> at the con. Yeah, seriously, I would have cried so hard. You did so well there, yeah, seriously. And I, it's seriously, I appreciate it so much. So people that might be watching this, just all of my thanks, all of my love. I, I just don't know what to say about this. This is amazing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Thanks. one thing to share yeah. that you know what yeah. you guys probably saw on YouTube from the performance. If you don't see it in, in person, to actually see the, the performance in person, like actually sitting there and seeing not as a video, you can actually see like how well it, it looks like because it like lasers on like a, a wall. And yeah, everything. it's like this glitter. It's much more smoother and the glitter. Yeah. And everything you see, goes. if you move your head, you see like this glitter in the lines. It's amazing. Exactly. It's and in the video, it, it always on shows the camera. The it looks. Yeah, yeah, see the scan lines and it looks like neon. Everything's like is that neon light? Is that no, no, no. It looks much better. Yes. And then, you know, your turn. Uh, you got yeah. five minutes. Hi, Becky McBurney? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's kind of, it's not really a super interesting story. I was the moderator of a chat room uh, for about a year. It was, it was something that just I and a couple of my friends had made, and it became reasonably popular. And there were, we had sort of our own internal system of politics. And there were people who were sort of trolls, and people who were like really obnoxious, people who were like kind of goody two shoes, and people who were just like, I, I, that I was, felt like I was banning every other week. Mm -hmm. And um, there was this one person who I was never on particularly good terms with because she was kind of on that borderline, like, bad person troll, kind of a little almost too big for her britches. We never had anything in common, ever. And I was, my finger was always just, like, tw twitching over the band hammer, like, ready just, like, to kick her out. And she started spamming this YouTube video. Not really spamming, but posting it like, oh my god, it's so funny. And it was just a compilation video that no longer exists on YouTube called Eight Minutes of Pinkie Pie. Which, and I think it was, because we were, at that point it was January 2011, season one was only half over. You know, and so I, I clicked it and I was like, what is this? And my first thought was, oh my god, they rebooted the My Little Pony franchise? Really? Like, re, 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 rebooted it? And, but I mean, like, I found myself watching, I mean, as it works, I mean, you know, I found myself watching the first, like, 30 seconds of it. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then she post, kept posting the same link a couple of, like over and over again. And me, being the idiot that I am, didn't realize that it was the same link over and over and over again. So I kept clicking it. And each time I got further and further into the video. And I'm like, God, why am I watching this? And I think by like the fourth or fifth or sixth time I clicked it, I was, I'd was i gotten all the way through it. I'm like, all right, well, this is kind of funny, I guess. And, and I, my, my other first thought was, um, you know, I bet my girlfriend would really like this. Because she just loves, she loves like Hello Kitty and she loves anime and she loves good cartoons. So like, you know, I mean, I, I kind of do too. I'm not, not so much Hello Kitty, but, um, so I showed it to her and she was sold immediately. She's like, oh my God, we have to watch this. We just, just, just no question. And it, the timing worked out because I ended up getting really, really sick that weekend that I found it. Like I found it like on like a Saturday afternoon I got really sick. So I was like, I stayed over at her place and was like, in bed on Sunday, it could not move. It was just, like so worn out, and we decided just like, well, what should we do? It was like, well, I don't know. Why don't we watch that My Little Pony thing I found? And so we just decided to watch the first couple episodes, and we were like, all right, this is pretty good, and we got nothing else to do. Let's just, so, three hours later, we're through all what I think we had fourteen episodes of season one at that point. We watched all of them, and we we're like, all right, this is good. And then we sort of have made a tradition ever since of watching them together every Saturday after the evening after they come out. I mean, that changed recently because now that I'm in the music community, I kind of have to, I have to sort of have to stay wired in on what's happening and stay current on the episodes. Otherwise, like I have to avoid all the Skype chats and avoid the IRC. Mm -hmm. And now she works yeah, and I work and I can't, we can't always make the schedules work. But I mean, that was how it was. We would just, we'd, she'd come over, I'd go over every Saturday and watch the episodes together. So, I mean, it's not a particularly interesting story. It was a pretty easy sell for me because I love cartoons, and I, I was, as a kid, I watched the original show, so, I mean, I was really familiar with the franchise, and I loved it as a kid, so, I mean, it was sort of a nostalgia trip, and also just, I mean, and then later it made perfect sense when I realized that Lauren Faust was involved. It was like, oh, no wonder I like it. So, I mean, yeah, it wasn't a hard sell, and the only hard sell has been, like, occasionally buying merch and having to, like, explain to people. It's gotten harder recently, actually. It was easy to explain to people when nobody knew what it was. But now people kind of have a preconceived idea of what being brony is about, what the show's about, and I have to sort of correct them as opposed to just explain it. Okay. So. Awesome. Thank you. That's it. Alright. Nice. Oh, you're hot. hot. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Uh, one of my fans, uh, he told me on top that he wanted me to make me a present. So I wasn't expecting stuff. I told him that my favorite uh, oh, pony is Lansing. But look what he did. He's a designer. And he did those things. Oh my Look god. Look at this. It's oh, so I am really jealous, actually. 
what it is, he actually, um, his mom actually came to me uh, today because he wasn't here at this time. Uh, he told me that he actually did this all by hand, and after he finished that, he basically uh, went by spray and basically did what graffiti goes by. He did the second version of it too. <laughs> oh, my God. No, what's this? Oh, man. So it's like a second version of it. That's pretty. Water. So I'm actually going to put this on the frame and actually put it on my on my wall because it's really, yes. really cool. The way you did that love and everything. Love it. So really want to. So where are you guys going? Question. Definitely. I, I love her. She's a great one. I don't know. Yeah. I just You're good at this question. Actually. She's the most realistic character. She is, and not only realistic. She's. Basis I also love the fact that she's generous and stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I, I wrote practically wrote an essay on my Tumblr okay. explaining why she's my favorite. Because she, she catches so much flack. Yeah, it's it's you know, here's the thing, I, did, I, so I, I do have to admit that I kind of hated it in the first season, but after the second season, I can like, oh, she's not a bad well, character at all. Triangle did a very scientific study about which pony is best pony by, <laughs> by searching the Google results for blank is best pony, and his tally which one got the most hits. Rarity was the least. And then he did, he did the reverse experiment where he tallied, he tallied how many hits he got for blank is worst pony, and Rarity was number one. So apparently the fandom thinks Rarity's the worst, according to Google. Right. Which is unfortunate if you ask me. I'm surprised, I thought Twist Rarity's would be first. Well, no, I'm the main six. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, Twist nice. would probably burn the fires of hell before. Snails can go to hell too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, well, no, don't worry about it. Yeah, do you see me on the frame? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's cool if you want to get No, 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 just that. Well, I want to do your interview.